Good morning, everybody. This morning, let's talk about racing. Has anybody ever heard the term, drive it like you stole it? Now, to understand it, how does someone drive a car who they stole? They drive it to its absolute limit, right? They run it to the ground because they don't care. They run it out, they pick up another one. Use that car up until it breaks, go get a new one. Simply go steal another one. Now, for a beginner racer, this is basically a simple way to explain that the car has to be driven really hard if you ever expect to win. Races come down to fractions of a second at a time. And, but however, the better you get, the more experienced you get, you start to sink some money in the car. That advice this may not be the best advice. That car ran out quickly. Times will get worse and worse, and if the car breaks down. So as you get more experience, you still push that car really hard, but you learn its limits. You learn what it can and can't do. How hard to push the gas pedal before the tires lose traction. How high to rev the motor, get the most power without throwing a rod. When to ease off, when to punch it, when to stop, do some repairs. When you know the car, you can drive it really hard without breaking it and get the results you needed to win. And you're probably thinking, it's Sunday morning. It's not Sunday, Saturday night at the drag races. What are we talking about here? Well, in racing, particularly drag racing, you have to push a car to its limits to win the race. Now, with human drivers, sometimes you break the block. You throw a rod, wreck the car. But imagine if there was a driver so experienced so good, they could push the car right up to the very edge and get every ounce of performance out of that car, but never push the car beyond its limits of what it could handle. God is that driver. We are the car, and our soul is the prize at the end of the race. Now, This is one way to look at life as a race with God at the wheel. Some sections we'll cruise through, but in some we'll think we're going to break. But God won't let us. He'll steer us through and we'll be better on the other side of things. Now as you go through life, you ever have those times you seem to push the limits and wonder why? Why has God planned for me? Why is this happening? What in the world is going to come out of this? And right now, we're in year two of the pandemic. I bet a whole lot of the world thinks this way. We've got nearly 800,000 dead in the U.S. Delta variant running through people like prune juice. There's a new Omicron variant coming out. Here's me trying to one up Delta to be even more contagious. Now, the original COVID-19 is crazy contagious. Delta is insanely contagious. Omicron is trying to do even better. What's going to happen? Where does this go? What happened to celebrating the end of the pandemic in the, in the summer? We had the vaccines. How do we look at this? Is God simply pushing us over the limit, using us up, going to toss us out and get a new toy? Well, some people might feel that way. But let's look at our instruction manual and see what we've got. Now let's start. Let's pick a race car. Got to start a race. Let's pick a choose, choose a car. Let's go with a famous one. Everybody turn to Job. We're going to spend most of the time here in the first part of Job. Job 1, 1 through 3. There was a man in the land of Uz, whose name was Job, and that man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and shunned evil. And seven sons and three daughters were born to him. Also his possessions were 7,000 sheep, 3,000 camels, 500 oxen of yoke, 500 female donkeys, and a very large household. So this man was the greatest of all the people in the East. That's our race car, Job. Now God saw him like this. He was a really nice race car. <laughs> we think it was a really expensive one. Now, keep this in mind as we go through this. Let's go down to verse 5, Job 1. Starting in verse 4. And his sons would go and feast in their houses on each of his appointed day. 
and would send and invite their three sisters to eat and drink with them. So it was, when the days of feasting had run the course, that Job would send and sanctify them. And he would rise early in the morning and offer burnt offerings according to the number of them all. For Job said, It may be that one of my sons have sinned and cursed a God, cursed God in their hearts. Thus Job did regularly. Job knew the value of preventive maintenance. He and his family were well maintained. So Job is that really nice car we're looking at. Maintained, ready to run. Now, right now he's just cruising, cooling around town, out for a Sunday drive. But he's a race car, though. Now, if you owned a car like this, wouldn't you be curious what it could do? What if you took it to the track and opened it up? What would it do? How would it run? What would happen? Would it hold up? Now, we know God knows all these answers. He knows them before we do. Who does the race car? Do we know? How many of us know what would happen when we're in something that really matters? When there's a really high price on the line? This is the setup. Now, let's head to the races. See what happens. Move down to verse 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them. And the Lord said to Satan, Where do you come? Satan asked him, From going to and forth on the earth, and from walking back and forth on it. And the Lord said to Satan, If you consider my servant Job, there is none like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man, one who fears God and shuns evil. Now, if anybody's watching Clint Eastwood movies, this is God basically looking at Satan going, you feel lucky, punk? Well, do you? God is setting up the race here. The adversary is simply a pawn, a patsy, doesn't know what he's walking into. That supercar is how God saw Job. But how Job appeared to the adversary is very different. God's got a sleeper car. And if you've never seen a sleeper car, this is what I mean by that. It's a nice ride, right? Family be touring around town. It looks just simple. However, what Satan didn't know, this guy's got a super twin up turbo V8 underneath the hood. It's a super killer ride. This, what looks like a family car to the adversary, is ready to smoke the adversary. God knew what was going on. God knew what was under the hood of Job. Satan had no clue. Now, let's turn down to verse 9. Job 1, verse 9. So Satan answered the Lord and said, Does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a hedge around him, around his household, and all that he has on every side? You have blessed the work of his hands, and the possessions have increased in the land. But now, stretch out your hand and touch all that he has, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, all that he has is in your power, and we do not lay a hand on this person. Okay, race on. That's the boundary we've got. The adversary took the bait, hook, line, and sinker. He thinks it's his idea to race. Now, he's basically saying, well, that's a nice car you have, but you never use it. That's a race, and I bet your little car will break down. You push the gas pedal too hard, and it'll fall apart. Now, this was Saturday night at the races. This is where a few winks would be exchanged, and large bets would be placed by those who were in the know. Because the adversary just walked right into the trap. He's talking trash to the master racer. Now, the race is on. Let's see what happens when the green light is lit and that race cart starts to really run. But, some things to note here. God is at the starting line with Job gassed, warmed up, ready to run. Job has no idea. <laughs> the adversary thinks he's setting up the course. And he's betting that God's car won't be able to complete it. But God put a limit on the race. The master racer knew how much car, his car could take at one time. Job was a supercar. But a master racer doesn't punch it wide open throttle and hope for the best. The master racer pushes that car as hard as it can, as it can safely go with that right at the edge of insanity, but not over the line. Doesn't break the engine block. The master issue wants to win, not break the car. 
if the car breaks, besides not winning the race, repairs are expensive, right? It's hard to rehabilitate, rehabilitate a broken person. It's better to collect the winnings instead of racking up expenses due to repairs, right? The master racer knows this well. He's also the master builder. He knows a lot about the cars and cares about them. God is the driver, but look how it appears in this race. Do this verse at a time. Verse 13. Now there was a day when the sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. Now, those of you that have read the story, they're starting at the finish line. That's what's going to happen at the end. We've got that right up front. Let's go to verse 14 and 15. And it begins. And a messenger came to Job and said, The ox were plowing, the donkeys were feeding beside them, and the Sabians raided them and took them away. Indeed, they have killed the servants with the edge of the sword, and I alone have escaped to tell you. Right out of the gate, the gas is poured on Job hard and heavy. That's a big loss. Let's keep going. 16. While he was speaking, also another came and said, The fire of God fell from heaven, burned up the sheep and the servants, and consumed them. And I alone have escaped to tell you. That car engine is revving high right now. It's not yet redlining, but it's climbing. 17. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, The Chaldeans formed three bands and raided the camels and took them away. Yes, and killed the servants with the edge of the sword. And I alone have escaped to tell you. All right. Gears are shifting. Tobers are kicking in. God's car is really humming right now, getting close to the edge of the safe zone. God's not allowing the celery to be eased up on yet, though. This is going to be a tough race. God knows his car, Job, will hold up some pretty insane stress. He's almost the finish line of this lap. Just keep going. 18 and 19. While he was still speaking, another also came and said, Your sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their oldest brother's house. And suddenly, a great wind came from across the wilderness and struck the four corners of the house. And it fell from the young people. And they are dead. And I alone have escaped to tell you. All right, that's it. Right up to the red line. He's past the finish line. God's car was pushed far enough. Lap complete. It's time to ease back on the accelerator before the engine breaks. First lap over. Time to check the times. Get ready for the next lap. See what happens. Verse 20. And Job arose, tore his robe, shaved his head, and he fell to the ground and worshipped. And he said, Naked I come from my mother's womb, and naked I shall return there. The Lord gave, and the Lord has taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. In all this, Job did not sin, nor charge God with wrong. God's race car isn't in real good shape mentally. Job was pushed really hard, close to breaking. Notice he didn't break. He's not over that line. He's still running. He made it through the lap. Really great time. Still in one piece. Now, did God's race car enjoy that lap? <laughs> no! That had to have been hard on him. Being pushed to the limit is never enjoyable. For those that work out, when you work out and you get those endorphins, they feel really good. But at the end of that hard workout, your arms feel like they're going to fall off. Your legs feel like they're jelly. You barely make it up the stairs. You don't feel good until later. You realize that you'll survive. We can do it again another day. But we're not done. I set up for the second run. Bets were collected from the last run. God smoked the adversary, just as God knew he would. But the adversary doesn't learn. He comes back for more. Challenge to Job 2. Read the first three, three verses. Job 2, verse 1. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And the Lord said to Satan, From where do you come? Satan asked the Lord and said, From going to and fro on the earth and walking back and forth on it. And the Lord said to Satan, If you consider my servant Job, there is none like him on earth, a blameless and upright man. When he fears God and stuns evil, and still he holds fast to his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him without cause. 
God picks the fight. This is a race worth having. He just smoked the adversary with his car, and yet the adversary shows back up. God dangles the sleeping car in front of him again. Sure enough, the adversary bites. So Satan answered the Lord, Skin for skin! Yes, all that a man has he will give for his life, but stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will surely curse you to your face. And the Lord said to Satan, Behold, he's in your hand, but spare his life. Skin for skin, folks. Stakes are high. Look what God does. Basically looks him in the eye and says, let's go. Again, God is in control. God set the limit. It's really at the edge this time. But there is a limit. God is racing to win. The master racer knows the exact limit of what his car can be pushed to do and what it would take to get there to win. And what's that prize being raced for? What is he winning? The car has to survive because the car is the prize. God and the adversary racing for Job's soul. It's kind of like racing for pink slips, car titles, in terms of racing. If God lost, you'd lose Job's soul. The master racer knows how to win and won't make a wrong move to lose the race. Now, in reality, the car is a person, right? It's us. And a person can crash themselves pretty easily, right? Let's remember how Job entered that, entered that last lap. Let's go back to 120, Job 120. Then Job arose, tore his robe, shaved his head, and fell to the ground and worshipped. The horse didn't throw the rider, so to speak. Job let the master racer race. Job trusted that the master racer would not crash. The race was not fun or easy. Whether the master raced the wheel, the race was won. Job's soul was still with God. Let's see what happens in the next round of this race. And this lap is really quick. Not really a lap, but a drag race. This is how God is viewing Job. Now, does anybody know what these are? This is what they call a top field dragster. If you ever been in one of these races? This is awesome. Outfield dragster. What is it? Is when you start up the engines, it shakes, it shakes the stands. You can hear from miles around, and they go down the track. It's awesome. But I'm not talking about racing. We'll get back to the story. These dragsters are cool. So this is what God is seeing Joe Bass. Let's see how God's dragster does. So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and struck Job with painful boils from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head, straight to the finish line for the race. Fuel was burning through this God's race car like a fire hose. Of course, fuel was pain, intense pain. Job was in intense physical pain at this point. God's race car is nearly the red line, all the way down the track. One wrong move, just a bit more gas, and that engine would have blown. Well, let's see what happens. And he took for himself a pot shard, at which to scrape himself while he sat in the midst of the ashes. And he said to his wife, Do you still hold fast to your integrity? Curse God and die. Now as bad as he is, and he's hurting, and now his only support basically comes and tells him to give up, that's it, right? That's right up near insanity. God's pushing his race car all the way to the edge. The master racer knows his car. And loves it, though. He knows exactly how much he can push it before it is too much. He knows exactly what is needed to burn all that gunk off built from tooling around town to reveal the top fuel trackster that he knows he has. Verse 10. There's a Job speaking. But he said to her, You speak as a foolish woman speaks. Shall we indeed accept good from God? Shall we not accept adversity? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. There it is. Checkered flag, quarter mile master, a record time log. God smoked that adversary one more time. Job shook off that sleeper car image 
And it's now clearly seen that he's that top school dragster that God knew he was. He made it. Job is as God saw him, and not how Satan saw him. It's clear for all to see, and a lot of book records the time. But, let's flip things. What if the horse threw the rider? What if the top fuel dragster decided not to respond to the master racer steering? What if we don't let God guide our lives down that racetrack? That could have been the end of Job. The race car would have turned from basically from a race car into a race crash and a big pile of junk. The master racer is also a master mechanic. And he can work some miracles to recover a crashed car. Mistakes can be recovered from. But what if it's not just a mistake? Let's take it a step further. A crashed car can be recovered with some work. What if the master racer of God isn't there to fix it? You end up with this. In their heyday, it was some really nice cars, but now, don't even people pay to get rid of them. What if Job had broken and turned his back on God? The adversary wanted Job broken. He certainly wouldn't lift a little finger to try to help him. Job would have been left a broken man and a lost soul. From top fuel winner to basically bottom shelf junk. And that's how it is for us. God sees us as top fuel dragsters, hypercars. He sees us as those racers who can take an immense amount of stuff and do wonderful things for him. And he'll try to show us this. At times, in ways that may seem so very hard to us, However, the prize is our soul. God is the master racer. As long as we let him have the wheel of our lives, we will make it through. Everything that comes our way. And that's guaranteed. There is no better driver than the one who built us and knows us better than we know ourselves. We know our limits. He knows our limits and he never will push us beyond them. God wants to win our souls, not leave us broken. So at those times when things seem dark, hard, there may be no way for things to work out. Remember, you are a race car. God is the master racer. And God always wins as long as we let him steer. That pain, stress, the burden you're faced with, maybe God turned on the gas to race for your soul and reveal who you really are. We're all unique. There's all types of race cars. And we all have different races. You never know what you're going to come up with and who you are. But make no mistake, you are a race car in God's eyes. You are incredible. And if you let him drive your life, you will win. And winning sometimes takes pushing that car to its very limit. And that's tough. And that competition is tough, and those stakes are high. You may get pushed beyond the things you ever even thought you could do. But with God, you will. And you will make it through. And you will win. Be the race car that God knows that you are. Hold on to God with all your might. And we will make it through. See the sunlight of God's love eventually. Now, if you want to sign up for the Master Racer Circuit, enrollment's a real quick dip in the water. It's very easy. You get baptized into a glorious, eternal life with God. And any time is a good time to dedicate your life to God. We have a convenient time each week because we sing the invitation song. And if you want to join God's team, or have anything you need prayers of the congregation for, please come forward and let us know. Thank you.